Namaskar. Recently I realized how spoiled I am. In a sense, how fortunate. I was talking to someone, trying to explain some subtle ideas. <laughs> but I understand that it's just beyond, cannot grasp. Like, I tell this much and feel that much and he can perceive this much. And it's a kind of, it makes you tired and makes you sort of frustrated because you just, you want to connect and together appreciate, together enjoy. Look, you are eating together bread and butter. <laughs> So we are, you know, you're enjoying and one person has no taste feeling, doesn't, you cannot appreciate together, you cannot share. One thing is to enjoy, but another thing is to share. Share is one kind of special enjoyment. <clears throat> Many times I suffer from that. I remember in the year 98, we were doing Kirtan, five days non-stop singing mantra. The mind goes so high and then I went into some kind of state. I was feeling like, really I'm feeling like I'm touching the divine. It's just such a tremendous, amazing feeling of light and love. At that state, the only regret I remember, and that regret that why I cannot share this, why I am alone here. I need to share this, I need that you also experience, and here all my friends, they all should experience this. <laughs> so this kind of deeper desire in the heart to share the happiness. <clears throat> Aesthetics you go in the innermost cave of your mind. It is said, Dharmasya tatvam nihitam guhayam. It means the essence of truth, the essence of the, 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 the greatest essence, the greatest secret of the universe, the, the fundamental truth is hidden in your eye feeling. So by exploring your inner world, you will be able to touch with that dharma, with that divine path, with that divine essence that dwells within you. That's why the mind has to become subtle. The crude mind cannot catch. Just like when people are catching the fish by the net, and if the cell of the net, cells of the net, they are very large, you can capture only la large fish. You cannot capture the small fishes. <laughs> so similarly, when we talk about subtle feelings, to catch that, you have to have subtle mind. Otherwise you remain on the level of intellectuality and it's kind of boring on the subtle level, above this intellectuality, it becomes the aesthetics. And the, the, the level of bhavas, there are you know, waves of feelings. You want to enjoy it, you want to be able to share it. I was talking to my friend, and he is a kind of young, uh, potential, saintly person. <laughs> So, I speak with him, this, I share my deeper feelings and then he understands. And then I marked, I, I said, you know, it is already blissful to talk about God, to talk about divine, to be, to, to be able to find the divine, to be able to find the feeling inside and then to express it to someone. Is already blissful. 
just like poetry. Someone is writing poetry. That's already blissful. But to be understood is double blissful. So I was fortunate because I am surrounded uh, either by my students who practice meditation and become like that, either by my teachers who, whom I adore, <laughs> or by the subscribers who also practice basic meditation and they develop that subtle feeling. The treasures of the universe, really the treasures, are in the spiritual world. To be oblivious of the spiritual world is the worst kind of punishment, is the worst kind of tragedy, because human body is made to experience blissful reality of divine consciousness. The body, the glands, the brain, everything is there to enjoy that expanded flow of the mind. So, spiritual seeker is just like an astronaut diving, or the diver, <laughs> or the, 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 the space explorer. Just like we are exploring in the external world, you know, I am going through the forest, I am studying the moss, the leaves, I am exploring. So many new things I'm seeing here. Like I'm entering a city of Stockholm, let's say, and I explore that beautiful city. In a similar, in a similar way, there is an infinite world of the inner feelings, inner bhavas, inner poetries, inner treasures. Infinite consciousness is there. With a tiny eye, you are looking at the painting. That painting is beautiful, elaborate, meaningful. But with a tiny eye, you come very close to that painting and you see just tiny little spots here and there. You fail to recognize the interconnectedness of all the dots on that painting and to see the greater meaning. Because the mind is small, it's not large enough to grasp, to catch it. So that inner exploration depends on the perfecting of the instrument of the perception. The mind has to become subtle and subtle and more subtle, and subtler. And you have to go deeper inside, inside, inside. And then you come there, you find a cave full of diamonds, sparkling emeralds and rubies, and so many beautiful uh, precious stones and gold, and silver, and platinum, and everything. So you lovingly select all those things. Then you bring it out. So at the gate of your cave, you're standing with all those treasures. And you will be so, you want, you are so happy to share it with everyone. But you are just like a ghost and nobody is seeing you. Nobody is seeing your treasures. Everybody is just, running there, you know, catching a loaf of bread, catching a car, catching something. And then just, and you become frustrated, sort of, because why? Why cannot I share? That's why poets always lonely. The poetry is the only companion. I express in my talk with the inner world, I express that inner treasure in hope that at some point, at time, somebody, there will be sensitive heart to grasp it, to understand it. So poets are lonely. So how, what blessing it is 
not to only be able to know it, to feel it, but to also express it, but to also be understood. That is a beauty of satsanga. Satsanga, connection with the eternal. So, through the mind of another human being, you connect with divine. He will speak something, something authentic, something real. And by listening to that, you will become blissful. You will, be, you, will, you will speak something, something authentic, something real. He will be blissful and you will be blissful. And you are in that enjoyment of the divine. You are sharing a meal of the divine consciousness. You can eat alone, but when you share it, it becomes much more happy occasion. And today a thought came to me. What about God? He is also lonely. He has so many treasures. But nobody to give them to. He is just like that man standing in front of the cave with all his treasures. And people are passing by. Just like through the ghost, he is not able to give. And what a beautiful uh, miracle for him when there is a perceptive mind. When there is a perceptive mind with whom he can enter into communion, into communication, and inspire the richness of so many beautiful feelings in that person. So God also wants to be understood. He has so many qualities, but nobody can understand those qualities. What is the use of those qualities? He wants to give, but there is nobody to take. The, uh, the mind is not sensitive enough. Of course, you know, philosophically speaking, consciousness is perfect. It cannot be lonely, it cannot be, it is not imperfect. But from the standpoint of bhakta or devotee, the person with the loving heart who is entered into the communion with the divine, from his standpoint he says, God was alone. What agony is that? When you want to when you have the ability to see, there is nothing to see. When you have the ability to give, there is nobody to give. When, there is, when you want to punish, there is nobody to punish. <laughs> when you want to scold, there is nobody to scold. When you want to praise, there is nobody to praise. So he has created the universe. The divine magical show, where he entered into the play with himself, and we are his children, we are his uh, replicas, we are his, his growing through us, manifesting through us and entering into the family relationship with him. In that relation, I remember today just from archives of my mind, this shloka came. I just suddenly remembered. Jayeva Jalava Nishata Ishani Bhih. Sarvan Loka Nishta Ishani Bhih. Jayevaika Udbhavi Sambhavi Cha. Jayetat Viduram Ritasti Bhavanti. It means there is a great magician. And this universe is divine show. And Everything comes out of him. Everything is his incarnation. And the person who understands that becomes blessed. The person who understands becomes immortal. So 
I think we are longing for that. We are longing for those flows, for those feelings, for those unions, unities, different levels of unities. We are, we are longing for that communion with the Divine. But He is also longing for the communion with us. It's just somehow it occurred today to my mind that He also wants us. We are eager to meet the Divine. We are eager to experience Him. We are eager to be in love with Him. But He is eager. He, it, she, I don't know how to say, is eager for love with us, <laughs> to be with us, to be understood by us. Just like a poet, there is a longing to express and to be understood. And this, the divine entity is, is the ultimate poet. It is the original entity. Whatever is there is just repetition. But he is original entity. When you touch him, only then there is originality. And in his even the same thing, it remains fresh every day. It doesn't become old, doesn't spoil. That's why he is called Abhinava, ever new. So when you experience him, even the same thing, but you feel it's like always fresh. I'm never tired, tired of that. So satsanga, we long for satsanga, we long for this kind of, to share a spiritual meal. <laughs> we consume the divine consciousness, we enjoy it, and we want to enjoy it together. So it is the greatest treasure of life, a company of the meditating people, teachers, students, friends, they become our ultimate treasure. What is most precious in the world is this kind of people with a subtle mind. Therefore, let's meditate. And when we meditate, when we meditate, you have to become quiet, you have to become silent, you have to, your body has to be quiet, your mind has to become quiet. In that quietitude, as you repeat the mantra, the, the wave of the mind will expand and you will touch slowly, slowly, not, not very fast, but slowly, slowly, you will touch with the deeper and deeper flow of the Divine. So just sit there and feel yourself lucky. Out of billions of beings, I am able to really feel it. So let me deepen that capacity. I've met some people, I felt like really, it's, 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 it's really kind of boring and exhausting communication. Because you express this much, you have this much idea and feeling, and the person can only perceive this much. You become really demotivated and exhausted, you just want to be quiet, you don't want to talk. And the same person, after three years or five years of sadhana, spiritual efforts, he becomes deep. And when you talk, you feel your, your hearts are talking. You feel unity. To me, it is a miracle. To me, it is a miraculous transformation. And we all, we all human beings, we have the brain, we have the glands, we have the nerve cells, nerve fibers. 
everything necessary to experience divinity. That's we are made for, what we made for, for the divine game, for the divine enjoyment, to enjoy all the treasures that the divine has in stock for you. And what a tragedy when we don't utilize. Because of the crudeness of the mind, the mind which always thinks of the limited objects, because of that, we are not able to fulfill the destiny. So let's meditate. Let's inspire everybody to meditate. And let us always be subtle. Go with the poetry, with the music, with meditation, with spiritual culture. Cultivate that kind of lifestyle. And I'm very fortunate that I am with you. Blossoming, emerging, unfolding, brilliant souls. Thank you very much. Namaskar. <laughs>